The movie begins with a young man in a parking lot, staring at a piece of paper dancing in the sky. Behind him is another young man trying to steal a van. After successfully breaking into the car, the two men get into the car and drive out of the parking lot. They arrive at a garage, where they steal the plate number of another vehicle. Afterwards, they visit a store to get construction supplies, ropes, a drilling machine, door latches, padlocks, you name it. The men arrive back at an apartment with only a few pieces of furniture. They pick the bed frame, destroy it completely, and proceed to make the entire room soundproof. They also install new locks for the door before proceeding to build a new bed frame. Satisfied, they leave the room, closing the door behind them. At the back of the van, the men install a huge tarpaulin, an item intended to block the passage of light and sound. A few moments later, they dress up and pack a bag filled with handcuffs, ropes, and a few items of clothing and a gun. Outside, the two men, Tom and Vic, sit in the van, patiently waiting. As soon as a woman passes behind the van, they put on their masks and step out of the car. Covering her face with a huge mask, they carry her to the van, despite her desperate screams. Inside the van, she's handcuffed and her legs are tied. Tom takes the SIM card out of her phone while Vic drives the van out of the area. Back at the house, the kidnappers tie their victim to the bed and use a pair of scissors to take off her clothes. With nothing but her underwear on, the mask over her face is removed and the kidnappers take a picture of her. Her face is covered again and the men forcefully make her wear new clothes. Certain that their mission is finished, Tom and Vic step out of the room while Stella cries for help. Back in the room, Tom and Vic ask Stella to provide the email address of her father. Seeing that Stella isn't ready to fully cooperate, Vic slaps her across the face. He asks the question again, and this time she gives him his answer. Happy at the progress with his victim, Vic asks Stella for her father's cell number, and she equally answers him. Content with the answers, Vic places the gag back over Stella's mouth and gets out of the room. Outside the room, Vic and Tom appear tense. To ease his tension, Tom drinks a bottle of water before packing Stella's cell phone, especially since his partner mentioned that they would still need it. Vic is sitting at a computer and emails the pictures taken to Stella's father, and adds that Tom should check her every 10 minutes. After sending the pictures, Vic leaves and orders Tom to lock the door behind him. Tom goes to the room the victim's in and they're alone. He stares at her, writhing in pain. Before we go on, like the video. Smash the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to join our expendable squad. And leaves when she calls for help. He sits at a table staring at nothing in particular, his eyes darting left and right in worry. His train of thought is cut short when Vic arrives. Vic comes with five burner phones and asks if everything's alright. Tom, on the other hand, is interested knowing if the email address is correct. Unfortunately, there's no certain way to be sure as Vic responded that there was no reply yet. After fixing the phones, they take water to a now calm Stella. But just before giving her the bottle of water, Vic tells her that they don't want to kill or hurt her. But he adds that they're ready to do so if the need for it ever occurs. He then makes her promise not to shout as soon as he takes the gag out. However, the moment the gag's out, Stella does the exact opposite, shouting as loud as she can. Immediately, Vic places his hand over her mouth. He then tells her that nobody can help or will help her, adding that her only ticket out of this room is with her two kidnappers. Again, she promises not to shout when he removes his hand. Interestingly, she doesn't, and instead takes the water. After drinking, the gag is put back over her mouth. Vic teaches her to sign if she needs to use the bathroom or toilet, causing her to ask for the bathroom immediately. Contrary to what she thought, her kidnappers bring in a container for her to pee in, rather than the toilet she expected. Tom takes the container to the toilet, washes it, and places it on the sink. He then goes to the kitchen, coming back out with a meal for both of them. At the table, Tom picks out his food, barely touching it. Vic reminds him that he needs to eat for energy. Tom still refuses, and this pushes Vic to forcefully feed him. As soon as his partner returns back to his seat, Tom reiterates that he isn't hungry, adding that everything is fine with him. Vic's infuriated. He asks Tom not to mess up this plan reminding him about how long he had been planning this. He tells his partner that he's overthinking, probably worried that they'll be back in prison if this doesn't work out. He concludes his speech by motivating his partner, who then proceeds to eat. Done with his meal, Vic leaves again, but before he does, he asks Tom to go check on Stella every 10 minutes, further stating that the gag in her mouth isn't safe. 
With Vic out of the house, Tom picks up the laptop to check the pictures of Stella. He stares at her picture, till his eyes well up with emotions. Shortly after, he goes to the room to check on her, even going as far as trying to touch her. Stella makes the sign to poop, and Tom gets her a bucket where she can do her business. Untying her, he points the gun at her and orders her to the bucket. But she can't, pleading with him to give her some privacy. As he turns around to give some privacy, she picks up the bucket and slams him from behind. The gun flies out of Tom's hand, landing in the area Stella's standing. She grabs the gun, points it, and orders him to set her free. Tom refuses and they struggle, causing a shot to ring in the air. As this occurs, she's able to pull off the mask, revealing Tom's real face. Stella's surprised to see him, and we discover that they are, in fact, acquainted. While surprised that Tom is the one behind her kidnapping, Tom argues that he's doing this because she ruined his life. They both struggle, and Tom finally overpowers her, which eventually leads him tying her back to the bed. Now, Tom blames her for leaving him, adding that Vic mustn't know that they used to be in a relationship. He leaves the room, taking the bucket with him. Vic returns with bad news. Stella's father doesn't want to pay the ransom. However, Vic is confident he'll eventually pay and tells Tom to get some sleep. The next morning, Vic wakes Tom to get ready. Immediately, they go into the room and announce to Stella that her father doesn't want to pay her ransom. Because of this, Vic explains they have to amputate her left pinky finger. Vic tells her that the finger can be sewn back on in 24 hours, but this is dependent on whether her father pays or not. Vic begins the process of cutting Stella's finger off. The whole time, Stella pleads to the camera, asking her father to help her. She apologizes for every fight they had, confessing that deep down she's always loved him. She then mentions that she is four months pregnant, a fact that makes Tom uncomfortable. Just as Vic is about to cut off the finger, Tom intervenes, cutting his partner short. Outside, Vic tells Tom never to intervene again. Tom walks away, leaving Vic to edit the video they've just taken. Vic believes the video is perfect for its purpose and hands Tom an apple as he leaves the scene. Now done with the video, the duo go back into the room with food for Stella. Just as Vic is about to feed her, Stella asks that Tom feed her. Vic refuses and goes ahead to feed her, assuring her that everything will be over soon. While the feeding continues, Tom notices the bullet from earlier. Stella also notices, and this causes Vic to become suspicious. Fortunately, he doesn't discover the bullet as Tom swiftly picks it up and hides it. Outside the room, Vic interrogates Tom, asking his partner about his suspicious behavior. Tom admits that he's a little bit nervous and leaves under the guise of using the toilet. In the bathroom, he tries to flush the bullet down the drain, but it refuses to go down. At the same time, Vic appears at the door, asking Tom to come out immediately. When he refuses, Vic forcefully opens the door. Tom realizes that he has no other option and swallows the bullet just as Vic opens the door. Now in the living room, Vic tells Tom that the adrenaline is the reason he's acting strangely, adding that he used to have that all the time. He picks up his shoes and tells Tom that it'll all be over in two days. He'll send the video to the father, who will make the payment, and they'll take her to meet him. He boasts that as soon as it's over, they'll be finally free and rich. Again, Vic leaves, and Tom locks the door behind him. As soon as his partner leaves, Tom grabs the computer and checks the calendar. He attempts to calculate the months since he's broken up with Stella, hoping to know if the pregnant child is his or not. Angry now, he goes into the room to confront Stella, calling her a liar and accusing her of faking the pregnancy before angrily walking away. A few seconds before he leaves, Stella tells him to feel her stomach. He does so, but feels nothing and becomes angrier. He tells her that if her pregnancy story is true, he wants to know why she decided not to tell him. Stella argues that he always disappeared. And when he went to prison, she just gave up on him. This statement devastates Tom. And he says he's the one who suggested her to Vic as a kidnap victim. He explains that he picked her because of her rich father and because she had broken his heart. Stella confronts him about the unborn child, but Tom remains unconvinced. To prove her honesty, she asks that he check the doctor's appointment on her phone. However, right before he puts the battery in her phone, Tom realizes that this could be a setup. The moment he puts the battery in the phone, the police could trace it. In the room, Stella chokes on her vomit. She calls Tom for help, who arrives and uncuffs her. Immediately, she vomits on the floor beside the bed. Tom embraces her when she's done and attempts to make love to her. Slowly, Stella cuffs him to the bed and stands a few feet away from him. She runs to the front door to scream for help, but nothing happens. Frantically, she picks up one of the burner phones and calls the police. Unfortunately, since she has no idea where she is, there's little the police can do to help. In the room, Tom's struggling to pick up the keys with his feet. 
Seeing that he might not be able to, he searches for another option. At this point, Stella's back in the room, her eyes fixated on the keys. As soon as she bends to pick up the keys, Tom kicks her in the head against the wall, knocking her out completely. He carries her back to the bed and ties her up. Vic arrives with good news. Stella's father has agreed to the deal, and the only thing left is the location. Vic says that they have to take her to the boathouse immediately now that the father has agreed to pay. Excited about the prospect of having 4 million euros as ransom, Vic says he plans to move to Mexico, adding that an old friend of his has shown him pictures of the country. Tom goes outside to get the van ready. While inside the van, he discovers Stella's pregnancy record, finally confirming her claims. While preparing Stella to transfer her to the boathouse, Vic discovers the burner phone. Stella denies any knowledge of how it got into her pocket, explaining that there's no way that she could have gotten the phone. Vic's surprised that Tom would have given her the phone and asks her why. Stella refuses to talk, and a frustrated Vic punches her across the face. He's also surprised that she knows Tom's name. Pacing around in frustration, Vic discovers a bullet lodged in the wall. He questions Stella again, and this time she explains everything to him, concluding with the fact that she is Tom's ex-girlfriend. He punches her in the face again, refusing to believe that she doesn't know his name. Tom arrives back at the house, oblivious to the events that just happened. Vic asks why Tom picks Stella out of everyone else. In Tom's defense, he argues that Vic in fact picked Stella, stating that he just made a suggestion. Vic says that something doesn't feel right, especially because Stella is acting so weird. Tom reassures his partner that he's being honest with him, and they go back to work. In the room, Stella's given an anesthetic and promptly carried to the van. They drive out of the parking lot and arrive at a lone road in the woods. The duo carries an unconscious Stella to the boathouse and cuffs her. Vic demands that Tom goes with him to get the money, despite the initial plan being that Tom stays with Stella. Tom's suspicious but still joins Vic in the van. They drive somewhere further than the boathouse, park the van, and then walk into the woods. However, just as he's about to leave the car, Tom puts the battery back in Stella's phone, making the phone traceable. Miles away from their van, the duo arrives at a strategic point behind a tree. Vic tells his partner to go get the money right ahead of him. Tom initially disagrees, explaining that this wasn't part of the plan. Left without any option, he goes for the money and discovers that it isn't there. He calls out to Vic to announce his discovery, but Vic proudly tells him that he gave Stella's father a new location. Then, he pulls out his gun and points it at Tom. He interrogates Tom, who confesses that Stella only knows his first name. Tom pleads for his life. She's pregnant with his child, he says. He then goes to remind Vic of when they met in prison and how he protected him. In a brief moment of weakness, Tom overpowers Vic and runs as fast as possible. A pursuit ensues between the two, but it quickly ends when Vic sends a bullet straight through his partner's back. Despite his injury, Tom hastily disappears before Vic gets to him. Vic goes back to the van and finds the phone with the battery already fixed. He angrily throws it into the river. In the woods, we see Tom hiding behind a tree with his bullet wound bleeding profusely. Back at the boathouse, Stella wakes up to discover herself in a strange environment. She's crying out for help, but as expected, nobody comes to her rescue. At the same time, Vic picks the ransom at the agreed location. He drives back to the garage and packs the money into another bag. He then puts the bag into another car. Vic goes back to the boathouse and attempts to kill Stella. Fortunately, Tom arrives in the nick of time to save Stella by hitting Vic's head with a bar. However, Vic shoots him down before he's able to wreak more havoc. Vic's walking closer to Tom, hoping to shoot him one final time. But a fatal kick from Stella sends Vic to the ground, causing the gun to fall a few inches away from Tom. Tom instinctively picks up the gun and shoots Vic dead. With the last ounce of strength in him, Tom picks out the key from Vic's pocket and gives it to Stella. Now free, she goes to Tom, who dies a few moments later, and escapes the boathouse. She gets into Vic's car and drives out of the woods. This was a review for Kidnapping Stella, which was produced by Henning Ferber and featured Clemens Schick, Jella Haas, and Max von der Groben. Would you have done anything differently if you were Stella? Tell me with the hashtag cinema recap in the comments.